Good evening, everybody. I hope you've had a good day today. Uh, this is our time to have a devotional. Uh, but first of all, I want you to get your notepad and your pen. So if you don't have one with you right now, go get it. You're going to need to write some things down as we go over some stuff tonight. Uh, it's good to be with you uh, again. And I just want to tell you thank you for your continued financial commitments and especially uh, your words and prayers of encouragement uh, that you've been sending us and giving us. Um, and we just really appreciate all of that as we are praying and, and uh, for you and all that you're dealing with in this time. So, do you have your notepad and your pen ready? Because there are some things you're going to write down. Uh, and I do have a little bit of a devotion, but today's a little bit different because I want to spend some time sharing our plan to be together for the month of April through social media, not in a gathering. And then I'll share some devotional thoughts with you. As you've heard me say throughout several different devotions, and I've got it right here behind me, that together is a wonderful place to be. And how are we going to experience this wonderful place without being in the same place? Well, Pikeful Church Life or PC Life. That's how you're going to do it. And so here's what PC life looks like for the month of April. Get ready to write this down now. First of all, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, as we've just started last week, this is how your pastors are going to connect with you. So on, on Mondays, Pastor Jordan is bringing you a worship-focused devotional. On Wednesdays, I will be with you. And we're going to be doing the Immerse Bible Study. Uh, a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, and then on Fridays, Pastor Pete is doing a devotion. And beginning this Friday, he's going to be focused on the subject of dealing with change. And so those are some of the ways that your pastors are going to connect with you throughout the week. Now, here's where you connect with your church family. As you have already been doing starting yesterday, I've been looking at some of it, uh, checking it out on some of the social media through my kids and my wife. Um, you've got some assignments to keep us all connected as well throughout this time. You've got some assignments to help us be together, as it says. So let me give you some very clear instructions. I want you on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Okay, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. I want you to be doing one of these three things. First of all, faith. I want you to be connecting to your church family through faith. And what do I mean? I mean whether it's a verse that God has dropped in your spirit or a thought that you've had, an inspirational or encouraging thought, or a song. Maybe there's a song, I don't want you to sing it, but maybe there's a song out there that you have, that you've been listening to. It's ministered to your spirit. And so you want to share uh, the title of that song. I'll give you an example. Uh, Jesus Culture CD, Living with a Fire. You remember Fan the Flame? This is a great CD, by the way. But there's a song on there uh, called Anointing. Look it up. Play it. Listen to the words. It will encourage you. So faith is something you're going to be posting to our uh, hashtag uh, PC Life or to our Facebook uh, stuff, but also fun. I want you to post some fun things, whether it's a TikTok, whether it's a challenge, whether you have some trivia that you want to share, whether it's, hey, could be a family line dance. I know Pastor Pete, and he'll get his crowd to do a family line dance for you and show you a little bit of that. But uh, I want you to do something fun. Throw it up there to where everybody can see it and kind of laugh along with you. Now, I don't know if you've seen many of them yet. I don't even know if they're posted yet, but uh, Kristen White has shown some. They're pretty good. I encourage you to look them up. But also, not just faith, not just fun, but family time. Whether it's meal times together, whether it's game times together, whether it's just sitting around talking, maybe you want to even film one of your you're getting on my nerve moments and uh and be able to post that up there you can go to or use the hashtag pc life 
um, and our Facebook stuff. But that's your assignment. That's the way you'll connect with your church family. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Well, we've got Monday through Saturday covered. What about Sundays? Well, we've been working on some things and what we're looking to do is that beginning Easter Sunday, beginning Easter Sunday, we're looking to try to live stream the worship and a message with you. Uh, bear with us. We're dealing with the technical stuff of that. Uh, and this we're gonna, will become our new norm moving forward for the time being in the month of April that we're going to try to develop some praise and worship and try to develop you a message on Sunday, kind of like what we've been doing. By the way, we will celebrate communion this Easter Sunday, so make your preparations as you can. Uh, I don't mean any disrespect by it, whether you've got saltine crackers and juice or whether you've got bread and juice, get enough for your family and we will have communion together Easter Sunday. Because you do understand that even if you're not together, that doesn't change the fact that it's still Easter. It doesn't change the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. I better stop or I'm going to be preaching here in a minute. And uh, i got a little amen corners around here. I don't want you to be hearing them. But uh, anyway, we're going to have Easter. i got a message for you for Easter that the Lord gave me uh, in the middle of all of this. I want to be able to share it with you. Looking forward to it. But that's what we're going to do. Hopefully beginning Easter Sunday. That's our target. Now, let's talk about Wednesdays. I told you a while ago that I was going to talk to you about Immerse Bible Study a little more. Well, here's what we're looking at. We're going to be doing, starting April the 8th, next Wednesday, we're going to be doing our Immerse Bible Study through Zoom, the online platform. Kristen White is helping us set it up. Y'all know how crazy it is that all of this is having to be done through social media. And you know just how much I love social media. And so here we are having to do all of this. So anyway, we're all being stretched and being challenged and being changed by it all. But we are going to be using Zoom, the online platform. If you've never used it, like me, don't worry. We're going to be emailing you the how-to's of Zoom early next week through our one call email notification. So be looking for that as we're setting that up now. And let me give you the outline. I know many of you have talked to me and said, hey, I'm already reading Revelation or I'm, I'm behind in my reading. I don't know where I'm reading. So let's all recalibrate together. Let's, let's get on the same page with Immerse. So on next week, Wednesday, April the 8th, Here's what you should have read between today and next week, April the 8th. We're going to all be reading Matthew. Then from that Wednesday through the 15th, you're going to be reading week 7 on your Immerse timetable. And that's going to be the, the letters of Hebrews, James, and part of John. And then April 22nd, we'll be joining together through the Zoom platform um, for week 8. And that's the rest of the Gospel of John. Uh, then the three letters, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. So that's the schedule that we will have on Wednesdays. Finally, now Nursery Preschool and F4 are already up on YouTube. And they're setting their things up week to week on YouTube, Pikeville Church, and your kids can come and see their lessons and get stay connected in that as well. The new thing we're adding, parents, especially parents of, of our Pikeville Student Ministries, this coming Sunday night at 7 p.m., this coming Sunday at 7 p.m. with Zoom, uh, Ms. Kayla Sauls and Ms. Dawn Edmondson have been working out the particulars with Pastor Pete and they'll have the details that they'll send to you parents to communicate about that. But your middle schoolers and high schoolers will be on Zoom Sunday uh, night if you can work that out. If you can't or you don't know how, be sure and contact Pastor Pete or Kayla and Dawn and they're gonna work with you on that. Okay, you got it all? Did you write some things down? I hope you did. And uh, 
hopefully I was clear enough to show you what we are doing to continue to be together because it's a wonderful place to be while we're not together in the same place. Uh, we miss you, miss being with you, and I'm going to tell you one of the things I'm praying. I'm praying that during this time, this crisis, that it will not only be uh, the crisis that we're dealing with in the world, but that it will create a crisis of hunger in the hearts and lives of Christians to want to be together more and to understand the magnitude of being in a faith community together. Speaking of prayer, tonight would have been our normal together in prayer time. And so here's my devotional thought with you uh, for today. Remember this as you pray. And I know a lot of people are doing a lot of praying right now. But I want you to think about it a little bit differently. Prayer is not an activity that earns us favor with God. It's not brownie points just to do praying so that you get brownie points for God. That's not what prayer is. It's not an activity to earn favor with God. What prayer is, is it's an action of love and intimacy between you and God. In other words, can I say it this way? What we're saying is less important than who we're saying it to. Talking with God, listening to the Holy Spirit, praying to Jesus as He intercedes for us, being with them is a whole lot more important than what we're actually saying. I hope you get that. I hope you understand that. And so as you move forward in your prayer time, here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to raise a praise just because you love Him. I want you to raise a prayer to the Lord just to spend time with Him in worship, in prayer, in praise. And then I want you to do one more thing. I want you to raise a hallelujah just to let Him know you are aware that He is with you and that He loves you in all situations. Speaking of that, that's another song that I heard this week, um, Raise a Hallelujah. And when I began to really focus on the words of it, wow, it was powerful. It really speaks to the time that we're in and the situation we're going through. And so we got a little special thing we're gonna uh, close with you. I'm gonna close in prayer, but you're gonna see uh, as Pastor Jordan comes in just a minute, and he's gonna just sing that song for you and maybe to get in your spirit and you'll be able to let it retract over and over in your mind in the nights and days ahead. Heavenly Father, I do love you. I thank you for our church family. I thank you for all the ways that they're lifting one another up. I thank you for all the ways that they're staying together through phone calls and cards and notes and all the ways that they're doing that on social media as well. God, I do pray that what has been working against us actually works in us, for us, in our relationship with you and creates a deeper hunger and a stronger connection in our spiritual walk and in our faith walk in a natural world. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. In your name, amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Will arise. Death is 
Hallelujah.